The Moonies I hate, as you well know. Here is a man, though, who is not a Muni. He's Gopal Krishna Goswami. And he is the head of the Hare Krishnas in Canada and in India. Now, Gopal, what do I call you? Gopal? Yeah, that's okay. Gopal Krishna Swami or Goswami. Gopal Krishna Maharaj. Are you an honest to goodness guru? Yes, a guru means one who gives spiritual guidance. So that is my business, to give spiritual guidance to society. I see. And you really, all the Krishnas are really cop-outs. You take no part in the practical life of the country. You merely go around dressed in your saffron robes, chanting and selling things. I would like to say that the people like you are cop-outs. In other words, the natural position of a living entity is to serve God. So when one doesn't serve God, he becomes a cop-out. I see. In fact, I think we're looking at things the other way around. I thought that Krishna consciousness came from India. You, are all your followers in Western Canada non-Indians? I would say 99%. But every, any time I meet them, I would say 99% percent of our congregation around the world, outside India, consists of people from that part of the world. I kind of like you. You're a nice guy. You're only 57. But every time I meet any of your followers, such as the two you have with you this morning, they all seem rather glazed and brainwashed. Is Hare Krishna a method of brainwashing people into abject serfdom and slavery? Actually, I'd like to correct your understanding. We don't brainwash people. In fact, from the very birth, the media and the educational system, the society, the relatives, brainwashed the living entity to forget his relationship with God. True. So what we are doing actually is just helping undo that brainwashing by presenting the real truth to the individual. All right, if I become a Hare Krishna, I must accept Krishna consciousness, I must understand it, I must give up all material things, I must take a vow of poverty, and I must stand around in the streets chanting Hare, Hare, Hare. You don't Krishna. have to stand on the streets. But you do it all the time. Not all of you us. You block the traffic on the streets. We you don't behave run. abominably no, on no, the streets. No, we don't block the traffic. When was the last time you saw traffic jammed into our chanting? Call to the Hudson Bay. When? When? Did the, did the traffic get blocked? No, 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 but you can't even walk by the corner without being pestered by people no, in not anymore. saffron robes. Not anymore. In fact, when we are out on saffron robes by Hudson's Bay, we're giving people away free literature. Who is standing in downtown Vancouver and giving out free literature? The Watchtower and the Krishna. They don't give it free. They request a donation, but we give our literature free. Now, and we are also distributing cookies free. You give me away cookies free? Sure. D t tell me this, though. Do you have some relationship to the Mooney, Sun Young Moon, who has built up a massive multi-billion dollar empire we have selling no things? We have no relationship with him or his philosophy at all. Our what do you think of the Moonies? Our relationship is with the Supreme Lord Krishna. We follow the Vedic scriptures that has its roots in India. Regarding the Moonies, we do not think it's a bona fide... Uh, movement is not based upon authentic scriptures a religion has to be based upon a bona fide scripture scriptures defined as the words of god all right now how do you get me into the moody's and tell me how you brainwash me so that i will accept this poverty and this humble existence in a material we don't society. want to brainwash you we would just wish that the brainwashing that you've experienced from your birth is freed that's all. No. We don't want to brainwash you. We want to present the truth. We don't run commercials of the commercials like you do, trying to brainwash people to buy a product. We are just humbly begging people to understand the real reality. That's another thing. You beg on the streets. You beg at the airports. I've seen you begging and begging and begging. When did you see us last oh. begging on the streets? In the last few years, I must have well, approached the Dutch. Well, uh, you have the Vancouver Sun article in front of you. But I don't believe what I read in the Vancouver Sun. Okay, Sun's. fine. You tell me. Okay. Have you stopped begging on the streets? Yes, we have. Finished? Yes, we have. Do you sell pamphlets on the streets? No, we don't. We give away pamphlets now because our sources of deriving income now have improved. We, are, we have a very wide congregation that gives us donations. Many members of our society do professional assignments. And our society is maturing and growing day by day, ah, even in Canada. Interesting point. Donations. If I am employed materially and uh, yeah. Hare Krishna, how much of my income must I give to you? What is the tithe? Uh, there's no minimum. There's no maximum. It 10%. all depends. It all depends on one's realization. But I must tithe what income I have to you. Well, society. I'll tell you one thing. 
The members of our society donate on a voluntary basis. There's no compulsion. How much pocket money do we get? Who? Your people who live in your communes. Ah, uh, they don't get as penny as pocket money. In fact, they have taken a vow of poverty. They've decided to dedicate their whole lives for the propagation of God consciousness, which is the need of the society. How many? You should be using your television to encourage the propagation of God consciousness because this is the biggest problem in society today. But uh, somebody's got to work. Somebody's got to build the hospitals. Fine, somebody's fine, got to make the inventions. Fine, go ahead and somebody's got to supply the services. <coughs> you fine. take all the advantages, but you do nothing practically to help society. In fact, we take all the advantages and we are rendering the biggest gift to society, In giving case. them God consciousness, giving them the process by which they can realize peace, the process by which they can become happy. The problem in society Take, for example, Vancouver or any society. Everything good is on the decline. Everything evil is on the increase. Why? Due to a lack of God consciousness. God or Krishna has to be brought in the center of You're our life. You're not suggesting to me, uh, Gopal, that the state of evil in the society is any worse today than it was a hundred years ago. It is. Take, for example, the government oh. statistics. The which? Statistics. The crime rate has gone up now compared to... A hundred years ago? Depends who does the statistics. I could do them again and it would go down by a hundred years ago. But tell me this. Okay. How many times do heartbroken parents, serious question, do come to heartbroken, yeah. heartbroken, parents. broken heart, heartbroken parents come to you and say, for God's sake, free my youngster from your clutches. You'll be surprised, not too often. And even when they do come and they see how happy the children are, they begin to reconsider what they have been thinking. Okay, I have more questions, and I might have time for a few calls to our delightful Hare Krishna man, Gopal Krishna Goswami. <coughs> Excuse my cough. After the break. All that my friend Gopal Krishna Goswami wants to talk about is philosophy, but I want to talk about practical things. Do you ban drugs? Completely. Do you ban all premarital sex? Yes, we do. Do you eat meat? No. You regard women as inferior to men? Not at all. I'm surprised why the media keeps bringing up this point again and again. The women have a role to play, the men have a role to play, the children have a role to play, and they're all playing the respective roles, just like within your TV station. You have different people doing different assignments based on their abilities, isn't it? Why isn't everybody else sharing the show? Dear old Rick Houston, quote you, you as You saying, just told me that you didn't believe in this article of the bank. I believe time. what I want to believe when I want to believe it. <laughs> but he just told me five minutes When I want to believe it, I believe it. You say women are intellectually inferior because their brains weigh less. We that... believe this has been misrepresented. You don't say that? No, we, I said something different. I said we've heard about that, but we didn't discuss this. You just said yourself that you don't uh, but believe women, this article. Women are treated inferior and... Are they in are not treated inferior, just say like, for example, if a woman has to stay at home to take care of children, doesn't mean that she's inferior. Women have different roles to play. Anyway, but everyone has an equal opportunity for serving Krishna. Um, that is the point to note. I bet you you don't get many tough kids in Krishna. I bet you get the kind of university dropouts who are a little confused. Well, I think you'll be surprised. And have been through drugs. Are you telling me the university graduates are not confused? Oh, they're confused, but some, the more they confused are, ones, join Krishna. I think the more education you acquire, the more confused you get. In fact, there was an article in the papers yesterday which showed, which said, that all these professionals are becoming unemployed really don't know what to do with themselves. Okay, one so here you have people who have education and experience and they're confused. They don't know what to do when they become you know, unemployed. Gopal, you're <laughs> almost too good to be true. <laughs> well, How many times have people been deprogrammed to get rid of this chanting hypnotism with which you infect their poor little brains? Well, not too many have been deprogrammed because the reality is even when they do get deprogrammed, they always end up coming back to the Hare Krishnas, the children, or the... What members. age must they be before the, you will accept them in one of your communes? Uh, whatever the minimum age of the law of that country is. We do not accept, we don't let anybody come unless he fulfills the minimum legal requirement of that country. Does he have to bring money? No, he doesn't. 
Go, pal. I, did, I was determined not to shout at you this morning, and I'm not going to shout at you. I just don't like your sect or your cult. Well, first of all, we're not a cult. A cult is defined as a group in which one personality is the leader, which is not based upon any bona fide religious scriptures. The Krishna conscious movement followed the Vedic text, which are the oldest known scriptures to mankind. The roots of this religion trace back 5,000 years, and there are millions of Hindus around the world who follow the same beliefs that we do. Are all Hindus? If well, one is a Krishna, Krishna is one a Hindu. Our beliefs are very similar, yes. But uh, that means that all these guys who are the white faces and the crop teeth are all Hindus. Our, our, I'm our beliefs are the same. Okay, go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. I like to ask this gentleman who's teaching his children. I notice that on the streets there are a lot of young kids uh, yeah. doing their little dance with their parents. I suppose they are. Mm. Who's putting them through the education system? We have our own system of education, which has been developed after a great, a great deal of research. And in fact, we found our children to be able to read and write and speak better than these children okay, of other your schools. children do not go to the public schools, is that no, correct? We have our own schools. You have your own schools? Yes. You pay for yourself? Yes, we, we've called, developed our own curriculum, okay. we pay for ourselves, we teach ourselves, and the proof is that our kids can read and write and speak better than the three to four years ahead of... Is children. your school system approved by the government? Any, any group, any group, no matter how weird and offbeat, can register a school with the BC government and they can't refuse to approve it. You know that? That's a fact anyway, even if you didn't know and it. Go ahead, it. please. Go ahead, please. Yes, um, I'd like to ask uh, the Gopal Krishna. I've seen the chanting in the park, and I must say I really like it. Um, I've received some of their magazines and their books, and I've read them. Sometimes I have a hard time understanding some of them, but it seems to me that they really have something to offer society from what they do and what they write. I was wondering if uh, Gopal could tell me what they think they can do for society. And I would like to wish them the best of luck, actually. I think it takes a lot of guts. To Thank you, ma'am. That's a favorable call. We don't need to dwell on it too Well, much. I can just tell her what we can do for society. For the society, we are giving them education which no other institution is giving. Actually, our institution is an institution where we are imparting the highest education, that is spiritual education. You say. Everyone says that. No, 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 I don't say it. Because you haven't taken the time to understand no, no, I it. I you mean, are trying to understand us from a distance. the Western world. I you are garbage. trying to understand us from a distance. But if you come closer to understand us, you'll also say the same thing. I watched a special the other night about all your strange cults from India and all the rest of it. And there were but all you these... You know, what, what, what is the meaning of a cult? A cult is a place where people don't have a free will. How do you say we don't have a free will? Because if somebody doesn't want to stay in a temple, he's will, free to walk out. You will forgive this sardonic remark, but I don't see anyone having a free will who walks around in a saffron robe, lives in poverty, not allowed to eat me meat, women regarded as inferior, and lives at the kind of low end of the totem pole. He doesn't live at the low end. In fact, he is living at the high end. Therefore, the devotees of Hare Krishna are always happy. Whereas you have to take shelter of meat, drugs, illicit sex, gambling to Are be happy. Are you accusing me? <laughs> <laughs> Please, Gopal, I will accept your apology. You will. Yes, I will. We're talking in general. That. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. A man of your kuth embarrassing a 64-year-old. No, we're talking in oh, general. Gopal, really? <laughs> Go ahead, please. You're making me blush. <laughs> For the first time in 50 years. Go ahead. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Would you let parents come and take their kids away? In fact, you'll be amazed how many parents visit their children on a regular basis. In fact, we encourage our children, okay. our members, to write to their parents. Okay. You've got 30 seconds to brainwash me to become a Krishna. You only have... 30 seconds. Our request is, the human form of life has a purpose. The purpose is to establish a relationship with God. Re establishing our relationship with God has to be based on some scriptures. 
higher than this garment Fair enough, the but garment you don't have to work. If I become a Krishna, I don't have to dirty you, my hands you do have fixing to do automobiles or you working do. for a living. You do have to. In fact, we have many mechanics who are Hare Krishnas. Gopal Krishna Goswami. I shall look forward to the future in Vancouver where there will be no begging on the streets by Krishnas and nobody jamming up the Hudson Bay corner. Well, I can assure you that whoever hears the chanting benefits spiritually and the glorification of the Lord should be encouraged. This country was founded on the premise that everything is coming from God. I so we are glorifying God in public and the media should encourage it. My thanks to Gopal Krishna Goswami. And I'll be back with reality and unemployment and people who work for a living or want to work for a living for the society after the break. With their incessant chanting, shaved heads, and saffron robes, the Hare Krishna followers were once an unmistakable presence on the streets of downtown Vancouver. They aroused our interest, and often our anger. But that was more than a decade ago. What has happened to the Krishna movement in the meantime? To help explain this group and its current role in the community, we have Gopal Krishna Goswami, head of the Canadian arm of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and some of its followers. Bob? Hello and welcome. Welcome to uh, the Vancouver show. And uh, uh, do I say, is it Happy New Year for you folks to you? You can say Hare Krishna. That includes everything. Hare Krishna <laughs> includes everything. Yeah. But are you on, you operate on the same calendar? Yeah, we do. So it is New Year's. It is. And do you mark the time in years? Well, we have to keep track of the time in years, naturally. So you begin a new year. Would you commonly begin a new year as, as other people would with resolutions or ideas uh, for change, our, for improvement? Yes, we do. And our resolutions are always to improve our commitment to propagating God consciousness. Propagating? Yeah. That, propagating and practicing. Now there's a difference, isn't there, between... Yeah. So the practice is, is evident in your appearance and in the life that you live, but how is the propagation of God consciousness changed in the past few years. Don't see you on the street anymore. Well, we do. We are on the streets. It's our, we, we are on the streets almost in every city of the world. And uh, we are also uh, preaching to people who come to our temple. We have more and more people coming to our centers. Our congregation is, is expanding day by day. So would you folks have been on the streets today? The streets of Vancouver or Burnaby, where your temple, your headquarters, New Westminster, Richmond, would you have been on the streets today? Yeah. Have you? We didn't go out today, no. But we but would, normally we would, you would? Yeah. Normally we'd go out on a day like this. Where would you go? We uh, frequent different areas of the city. The most popular is uh, right downtown Georgia and Granville. And when you go there, what is your, may I ask the gentleman beside you, what is your motive for going there? Why are you there? Well, to glorify God and to attract others to the glorification of God. Is that the motive? Yes, it certainly is. How many, how do you attract people? We attract people by chanting the Lord's holy names. Which is the chant we're all familiar with. That's correct. You certainly, you certainly have familiarized the Western world with your chant. Uh, is that from repetition, from appearing, sir, in public all the time? Well, naturally, just like you have commercials on the TV, the more you repeat a commercial, the more the consumer becomes aware of the product you're featuring. So the more we chant, the more often people hear it, the greater interest they take in it, the more they read our literature, the more they come to our centers. Day by day, we're opening more and more centers around the world. We have over 200 centers around the world today. Is what you're propagating, or may I ask you, is what you're propagating a, a simple truth, a truth simple enough that you could tell it to me now? God consciousness? Yes. God consciousness is dormant within everyone's heart. The chanting of Hare Krishna awakens that God consciousness that's in the, within the heart of every living being. So it is there, it's within me, yes. but dormant within me. Yes. And and perhaps I wouldn't have stumbled broken my foot if I had been more more conscious or, or is that a silly analogy that this kind of mundane day-to-day -day lifetime be, accident this can be attributed to what is called the law of karma the law of for karma. every action there's a reaction is this bad karma then on my part sir that I would break my foot on a holiday yes you could call that bad karma why what it, what because is being it visited upon because it caused you suffering therefore it's bad um, we would understand that uh, 
it, it could be a reaction to something that you did in a previous lifetime or in this lifetime. Maybe you kicked someone <coughs> and you got a reaction for your foot. I see. Yeah. But it, we would also see it in this way. We, we would also <coughs> see that it would remind us, actually last year just about this time I did something similar to my knee, so I can sympathize with you, but uh, it would remind us that this material body has a great capacity for suffering and uh, it would remind us that we should concentrate on spiritual activities and hoping to uh, when we at the time of death get a spiritual body which doesn't isn't subject to breaking the foot purely purely spiritual activity then in in this in this life in the physical then is is the should one attempt to detach one's consciousness from the body one should attach his consciousness with God. One must understand the purpose of human life. One must recognize that everything is coming from God and human life has a purpose. And the purpose of human life is to serve Lord. Now this doesn't mean that you have to, you have to withdraw to the forest or the mountains. One can live in the city and still glorify God as the members of a society are. We have members in all walks of life. We have professionals and we have monks who do full-time propagation. Are you folks then monks? Is it important to shave your head? No, to wear a no, we, we have many people who have hair. In fact, there's a, one of our members sitting in the corner over there. He's a part of a congregation. He has hair. Only those who dedicate themselves to full-time propagation shave their heads. Why did you choose the full-time propagation? Um, I chose the full-time uh, in Krishna consciousness because it became more fulfilling. Um, the whole idea is to dedicate one's life as much as possible, but if one can dedicate one's life fully to propagating Christian consciousness, then that is very nice. It's, uh, we look at it as the highest welfare activity. As we have learned about Krishna consciousness, we practice it, and we try and inform everyone else. Also. The highest, you said, highest welfare mm. activity. Is there humor in your day-to-day -day life, sir? Yes. yes. There is? You laugh? Yes. Do you children laugh every day? In fact, like we start laughing at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Most of the people are still sleeping. 4.30 in the morning? Uh, we, our morning. members get up at 3.30, and before they're ready, and they're smiling, and they're laughing, and by 4.30 they even start dancing. Something that you can't even imagine. Well, I got up at 4.30 in the morning for many years to do a morning radio program, and to be honest, when I stopped doing that and started working in an evening television program, Physically, I felt better. Again, is that a problem with my, with my, is it karma that I would feel bad getting up in the morning? Well, if you want to get up in the morning to glorify God, because morning is the most auspicious moment for having a clearer thinking, then it's okay. But if you're getting up in the morning just to go, go to the factory or a radio station, it's not the same purpose. Do you kids like the mornings, early morning? Do you get up and laugh? You're smiling. Do you laugh in the mornings? Yeah. What do you do first thing in the morning? What do you do first thing in the well, morning? Well, we wake, we wake up and then we go to the first worship ceremony. Before you eat? Yeah. Do you play? Yes. They were playing soccer this afternoon. Who won? <laughs> or, or do you have principles of competition? Do you have them compete? Friendly competition. Friendly competition? Are you happy? Yes. Are you? Are you? You're very pretty. What is that you have in your hand? I've just come back. Garland for you. That's a garland for me? Yeah. Oh, get one. really? <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's be It sure smells beautiful, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to go to a commercial break and come back. I wish you could smell this garland. It smells just like a lay from Hawaii, maybe even more beautiful. We'll be right back. Thank you. Gopal Krishna Goswami. Proper pronunciation of your name? Yeah, that's okay. Why is this garland of flowers uh, more pleasant to smell, say, than, than, a, than a lay that I would receive at an airport in Hawaii? Well, one thing is this has been offered to Krishna, and the garland has been made by the devotees of Krishna, and because it has been prepared with love, everything tastes and looks a lot better. Is, a, is diet then connected to your spiritual consciousness? It is, because a man is known by the food he eats, as they say in the English language. So the food we eat contributes to the consciousness we develop. Therefore, we abstain from certain sinful activities, including certain sinful diet. 
like we abstain from eating meat, fish, or eggs. We abstain from taking intoxication. We abstain from gambling, and we abstain from illicit sex life because these four, when indulged in, form the principles or the basis of sinful life. And if one wants to try and understand God, who is defined to be the purest person, one also has to become pure. And there's no question of becoming pure unless one abstains from sinful activities. But all of this which is available in the modern world, all the, all the attributes of life, including yeah. sex for pleasure, for example, one could say, and we've talked to other people of other religious calling, who said it's available, it's a pleasure, it's God-given, it's to be enjoyed. And it's almost a duty to pursue pleasure in that sense. What's your... Dis what's your well, we are also hankering after pleasure. But our pleasure is something permanent and we have discovered a higher taste. It is not that our members have not experienced indulging in activities that you maybe or the others are indulging in. But we've tried everything and now we've also had the fortune of experiencing what is known as spiritual pleasure. And after comparing the two, the conclusion is that spiritual pleasure is far better. The problem is that you have not tasted spiritual pleasure yet. But are you sure I haven't? Well, majority of the people have it. Therefore, they say that that material pleasure is higher than spiritual pleasure. But if one has tasted both, then he will conclude that spiritual pleasure is on a higher platform. Are you a missionary here in, in the North American culture in a city? Are you a missionary? Yes. Yeah. Do you feel called to perform a mission among people like myself that perhaps haven't experienced this spiritual pleasure? Of course, when you have something that's very beautiful or something that you treasure, then automatically you want to share it with someone. If you cook a meal, it's much more fun to share it with someone than to eat it yourself. God consciousness gives such a pleasure and you re derive such satisfaction. And like Gopal Krishna was saying, we've all experienced so many different pleasures, drinking pleasure, sex, for a drug pledge but still we gave it up because we wanted the highest taste and the highest taste is Krishna consciousness I understand though that one of the teachings of Krishna consciousness is an inequality between men and women if is that you, true if you see people as men and women there'll always be inequalities there's inequalities between animals and humans but still the soul is pure and there's a difference between the soul and the body my soul is the same as I have a spirit soul you have a spirit soul I have a woman body you have a man body as long as we're trapped in these bodies then we'll never achieve real God realization but real liberation means understanding we're a spirit soul are you are you a novitiate in, in, in this religion? Not yet. You're studying it to enter? Well, I'm attracted very strongly, so I do the best that I can with what I have now. Were you aware ten years ago of... Yes. What's, what changed your mind now to, to attract you? It's always been there, but I'm just slow. <laughs> you've always been interested? Yes. Fascinated? Yes. Had you been to a feast, accepted an invitation to the temple before? Um, not until this summer's Rath Yatra festival, which is really something beautiful that the Krishna people do for the city of Vancouver. The festival of the chariots. Okay. Yes. Did you attend it last year? I saw it, yes. I don't know if I would say I attended it. I, I, I stand back like probably most people in this culture and watch in wonderment often. Sometimes there was antagonism. Has, has that changed, have you found? It has. We can see day by day people are appreciating this movement. It's just a question of taking the time to understand well, it. Is it an appreciation or a tolerance and an acceptance? I would say appreciation and also tolerance. More and more people are appreciating it, more and more people are tolerating it, less and less people are fault finding or criticizing. Do you give over all of your personal life, your belongings, your material, your your income if you live outside? It's on a voluntary basis. If somebody wants to, he can. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. How many, how many people drop out? I would say very small. The percentage of people dropping out is very small. About in the first year, most people drop out in the first year who are going to drop out, would that be your experience? Yes. Uh, after an initial period of, say, a year, then people usually have decided whether they like it or they can perform the austerity that's involved, and, and they usually stay after that. Perform the austerity. It's a dedication. It's a monkish 
or, or an ascetic type commitment. of dedication, commitment, requires a commitment. Are you young people committed? That's a silly question because I'm sure you are. You are, aren't you? Are you? What is your commitment? What is it to? I, I like Krishna consciousness. You, do you go to school at the temple? Yes. Were you playing soccer today? No. Oh, yeah. Do the girls play soccer as well? No? no. What do you... Those look like deep fried something, but they're not, I bet. Yeah. What are you holding in your laps? Well, they're called samosas. They're Indian preparation. Samosas. Yeah. You know what I'd like you to do now as we go to a commercial break? We're going to have some music after this commercial break. Electric music. But I would like it if you would chant for us. Most people are familiar with your chant. Would you chant for us to a commercial break? Thank you all very much for being here. Happy New Year to you. Thank, Thank you. you.